Welcome back to the Maths Guy, everybody. Today we are going to be looking at equivalent fractions together, and we've got these four questions. But the first thing we need to think about is what is an equivalent fraction? So I want to show you this chocolate bar. Now, I could chop this chocolate bar into halves, and I could offer you this one half here, and you would get one half. Or I could give you the same value, but I could give you these two quarters. So here we have two quarters. But it has the same value. So just because it looks different, this two quarters is the same value as one half. And therefore, that makes it an equivalent fraction. So an equivalent fraction is basically just a fraction that looks different, which has been split differently, but has the same value. OK. So let's have a look at question one together then and let's see what we need to do to answer this. So we're going to look at question one. We're going to look at this one half. OK, and let's have a look at trying to find some fractions for it, some equivalent fractions for it. And we have these three steps. We have step one, which is to multiply or divide. Then we have step two, which is to multiply the denominator. And then we have step three, multiply the numerator by the same amount. So what is a denominator and a numerator? Well, the denominator is this digit under the bottom. So this would be the denominator. And the numerator is this one at the top. This is the numerator. OK? Now, the denominator is showing you how many your item has been split into. So if we go back to our chocolate bar, our chocolate bar has been split into two, so our denominator is two. And then the numerator, the top number, refers to how many you're getting. So if we have one half here, we have one, and then over here we have another one half. OK? So let's begin, and let's follow our steps. So step one says multiply and divide. Well, what does that mean? It means that multiplying and dividing is what we're going to do to find an equivalent fraction. But what I can see here is that we can't divide because 1 cannot be divided. So we're going to have to multiply. So I've done step 1. I've decided I'm going to multiply. And then it says step 2, multiply the denominator. So I'm going to pick my denominator here, and I'm going to multiply it by something. For example, multiply it by 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. Then it says, step three, multiply the numerator by the same amount. So I need to, it, whatever I've done to the bottom, I'm going to do to the top. Whatever I've done to the denominator, I'm going to do to the numerator. I times the denominator by two, therefore I need to times the numerator by two to keep it the same value. And one times two is two. OK, and what do we see here? Well, we see that we have a one half being the same equivalent value as two quarters. And we saw that earlier, didn't we? One half is the same as two quarters. So we know that's right. Let's do another one. Let's times it by 10. So again, I'm going to multiply, but this time I'm going to multiply by 10. 2 times 10 is 20. And then whatever I've done to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. So I'm going to times the numerator by 10. 1 times 10 is 10. Therefore, 10 twentieths is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. And I could do this forever. There's an unlimited amount of times that I could find an equivalent fraction, depending on the numbers I multiply it by. Let's multiply it by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Multiply 1 by 5 is 5. 5 tenths is an equivalent fraction. OK, let's pick a different question. Let's pick a harder one. Let's have a look at 4 sixteenths, OK? So, same steps. I'm going to choose whether I multiply or divide. Then I'm going to multiply the denominator. And then I'm going to multiply the numerator by the same amount, or divide, OK? But in this case, my step 2 and step 3 might be divide instead of multiply. So let's have a look. Now, I have 4 sixteenths. Now, I can see straight away that I can divide if I wanted to, because I can divide the number 4. I know that, for example, 4 could be divided by 2. And I'm going to start again with my denominator, and I'm going to divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And remember, whatever I do to the denominator, I have to now do to the numerator. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 
So two eighths are the same as four sixteenths, same value. If we we're gonna get our chocolate bar and cut it up, having four sixteenths of it would be the same as having two eighths of it. Okay, let's do another one, because I can see another division one in here as well. I could divide by four. So let's do 16 divided by four is four, and one divided by four is one, one quarter. So 4 16th is actually an equivalent fraction to 1 quarter. And we call this equivalent fraction here the simplified version because this is its lowest form. These are the smallest numbers, the smallest digits that we can use in this fraction to show its equivalent value, 1 quarter. So this is how we really want to see all of our fractions in the equivalent form. Let's do one more where we multiply. Let's do a crazy one. Let's multiply by a million. Crazy, okay? So, 16 times a million is 16 million. And four times a million is four million. So four million sixteen millionths is an equivalent fraction. Looks pretty crazy though, right? Well, that's because it's got huge digits. But don't forget, it's the same value. You might look at that and think, well, I'm going to get loads of that chocolate bar. But actually, you're going to get exactly the same amount because the chocolate bar has been now split into 16 million pieces. You're going to get 4 million of them, but each one is going to be tiny. OK, let's look at another one. Let's have a look at one like this, because this is what you might see sometimes. You might see an equivalent fraction where they already give you the denominator. So let's see how we solve this one then. Now, we're going to have slightly different steps this time. First, we're going to find the connection between the denominators. Then we're going to find the multiple or the divisor, and then we're going to multiply the numerator by that same amount. So first of all, we're looking for the connection. Well, I can see a connection straight away. I can see that 27 is in the 9 times table. How do I get from 9 to 27? 9, 18, 27. I'm going to times it by 3. And remember, what we learned from the last question, whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator. So therefore, if I've times the denominator by three, I need to times the numerator by three. Three times three is nine. So the answer to this question is, three ninths is the same as saying nine twenty-sevenths. Give ourselves a tick. Nice and simple, right? Okay, let's have a look at one last one. Let's have a look at this one here. And this is slightly different. This time we've been given the other numerator, and it's a nine. So let's see what our steps for this would be. Step one, we need to find the connection between the numerators this time. Then we find the multiple or the divisor. And then we multiply or divide the numerator by the same amount. So can we see a connection here already? Well, I think I can. I think from getting from 3 to 9 is in the 3 times table. And I can go 3, 6, 9. So again, it's multiplying by 3. So remember, whatever I've just done to the numerator, I now need to do to the denominator, step 3 times 5 by 3 is 15. 9 fifteenths are the same as 3 fifths. So a couple of things to point out at this point. Firstly, one really important rule, to make sure that we're keeping these fractions equivalent, we need to do the same process to the top as we do to the bottom. Same process to the denominator as we do to the numerator. So whatever we do to the denominator, whether we times it by a million, divide it by five, times by two, we would need to do the exact same thing to the numerator. It's really important to keep it equivalent. We need to keep those multiplications or divisions the same. That's the first thing. The second thing is, why do we even need to find out what an equivalent fraction is and how to find one? Well, we're going to get into that much more throughout this fraction series, because when we get into things like adding fractions or comparing fractions, sometimes we need to get the same denominators or numerators to help us. So finding an equivalent fraction will be what we do to help us do that. So keep that in mind for our next lesson, guys, which is going to be how to compare our fractions. Cool. Hope this has been useful to you guys. If it has, think about giving us a like and a subscribe. Check out the website, www.themathsguide.com, and we'll see you in another video. Peace out.